So primary mediastinal B-cell lymphoma is a rare subtype of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And it used to be thought of as a subtype of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, but recently it's been recognized um, that it is a distinct NHL subtype. And it has actually clinical and molecular features that overlap with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So it has a peak age incidence in adolescents and young adults. And molecularly, a lot of the genomic alterations, um, including the SNVs and the structural alterations, overlap with classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So alterations in beta 2M, um, STAT6, as well as uh, amplifications in 9P24, which leads to PDL1 one um, upregulation. And so it's a very distinct and unique subtype of lymphoma. And, and being recognized as such, actually, there's been um, advancements in both our understanding of the biology as well as the, the therapeutic management for these lymphomas. So within pediatrics and young adults, historically, these patients have been treated on protocols for mature B-cell lymphoma, um, which are really protocols that have been designed for Burkitt lymphoma. And there's been a recognition that patients with PMBCL or primary mediastinal B-cell lymphoma when they're treated on these mature B NHL regimens, um, their outcomes are inferior compared to patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, for example, treated on these regimens. So, so there's been an interest in, in focusing specifically on this group and developing clinical trials that are specific in, in PMBCL um, to address this, this unmet need of inferior outcomes, especially in, in the pediatric and young adult group. Um, on the adult side, as far as standard of care. There's no single standard of care um, for PMBCL. Generally, it is a rituximab-based uh, chemotherapy regimen with either intensive chemotherapy, um, such as uh, makeup B, for example, uh, or less intensive therapy, such as RCHOP, and then more recently, the dose-adjusted EPOC-R chemotherapy regimens, which had excellent outcomes in a single center study from the NCI. However, kind of the real world experience, um, the outcomes are slightly um, uh, not as optimal as, as they were in that, that NCI trial. Um, so in recognition of the excellent outcomes using dose-adjusted EPOC-R in adults, uh, this has been tried in a phase two pediatric international trial. And the event-free survival was around 70%, which is actually no better than we were doing um, in our standard pediatric regimens. So there's a large unmet need in, in PMBCL to advance outcomes in this generally young population um, with uh, inferior outcomes relative uh, to, to other um, other lymphoma subtypes uh, that we see in this age group, for example, like, like Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, and so one of the main um, areas of focus for my talk was a randomized phase three clinical trial that we are now conducting in PMBCL. So we're looking at the addition of uh, nivolumab to standard uh, chemoimmunotherapy for patients with previously untreated PMBCL. So in this trial, um, we have the um, collaboration between all of the NCI cooperative groups. Um, so this is being led by the Children's Oncology Group, but we also are enrolling adult patients and have had input uh, really from day one uh, from the adult cooperative groups. The co-chair is, is Anne LaCase from the Alliance Cooperative Group. Um, and so we're, we're enrolling across ages. Uh, the physician chooses the chemotherapy backbone between RCHOP and dose-adjusted EPOC-R, and then patients are randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive the standard of care, which is six cycles of chemoimmunotherapy therapy versus uh, the six cycles of chemoimmunotherapy plus nivolumab on, on day one of each cycle. Uh, the primary endpoint, uh, endpoint is progression-free survival, um, and uh, we plan to enroll just under 200 patients uh, over a four-year period to answer this question. Uh, we're actually enrolling quite well to date ahead of what we had projected, um, and this is quite exciting for us. This is an incredibly rare NHL subtype. We were really just uh, guessing, essentially, when we were estimating our, our accrual, uh, and to see such robust accrual and enthusiasm for this trial has been really encouraging and I think reflective of the fact that people are, are searching for mechanisms to improve outcomes in, in this disease. Um, so as far as what are, the, what are the unmet needs in PMBCL, I think we really do need to understand the role of novel agents in upfront therapy and we're hoping to answer that from this trial. Um, we also need to work on biomarkers in PMBCL. Um, we basically treat all patients with PMBCL the same regardless of 
age stage of disease. We have no molecular biomarkers to predict outcome. Uh, we don't know very well how to use uh, imaging, uh, be it uh, PET, metabolic tumor volume, to determine outcome in this group. Um, and so there's a great need uh, to understand biomarkers. And then in the relapse setting, uh, we have a lot of novel agents. I think uh, a lot still needs to be known about how to use and how to sequence these, and, and particularly where CAR-T uh, fits into this. And so I think that that's going to be an important question moving forward as well uh, in PMBCL. And so we're hoping to answer some of these questions um, from our trial, uh, but then also I think one of the main lessons that we've learned uh, from the trial so far is the uh, the importance of collaboration. And it has been so essential working across age groups and across the entire um, NCI clinical trials network to accomplish what we have so far with this trial. And I think that's going to be key in the future to, to answering some of these these very important questions in PMBCL.